Hello, I am Scars McNeil. Uh, this is my official music channel. Um, so hello to Renegades, who have already, uh, many of have already met me twice. Uh, this is going to be a follow-up on that. Um, and then hello also to any Juggalos. Um, or any other artists, musicians, or people out there who have an interest in branding and artist branding especially as I am an artist and went down this rabbit hole and learned a great deal that the industry doesn't know. So one of the things I've gotten a lot of comments from the last two videos, a lot of positive feedback, um, but there's still this great misunderstanding. A lot of people think I'm advocating for formula and some people think that this is somewhat theoretical. It is not. Uh, these branding concepts come from uh, neuromarketing research and other research that have been known for to some institutions for years. The church, Marlboro, Coca-Cola, Harley Davidson, these are mega brands and they have all of these as a part of their branding and have had them, uh, same as Macintosh or whatever. Now, in music, Specifically, um, when I first learned these, I kind of did this dive of who were the most stable and best branded acts in entertainment. And I looked at Cirque du Soleil, looked at Star Wars, um, Disney, but I also looked at a lot of musicians and artists. Probably, I think it was about 50. And at the top, there was like Grateful Dead and Kiss and a few others, but I think it was KISS that had the next highest. They only had seven of these pillars clearly identified in um, any given product or any given song. So the one artist at the time, or the one act, I should say, um, rap duo, who had a complete branding at that time was Insane Clown Posse. And then, um, as of recently, as of last year, I discovered High Ren, and that song, that particular performance, is also of perfect branding. So what I've done for you is I have compiled, and not just for the internet, this is also for um, school and for helping artists uh, that I work with in the future. But I've compiled a visual representation of what these branding pillars are and kind of how they function and how they show up. And the thing that I used is the three perfectly executed branding models of Weddings, Wren, and the Insane Clown Posse. Juggalos, take pride. And I gotta tell you, I studied my butt off to get aware of these. And uh, I'll, I'll mention the, the nature of which I did in a moment, but I know I'm, well, I would love to interview them about this subject, uh, Joe and Joey or Violent J and, and Shaggy, uh, because they intuitively adopted all of these aspects into their branding which to me is even more genius than researching it. Because in my case, if I brand something right, I owe, I'm standing on the shoulders of geniuses before me. In ICP's case, uh, yeah, they, they just instinctively knew what a good brand was. And I think a lot of that was their proximity to, to wrestling and stuff. But anyhow, I don't want to make light of what they've done because I'm actually like... When I did their branding compared to everyone else, I was like, Jesus, man, these guys. So there's this first question that you have to answer with every song, every video, uh, your, your identity. And it's what of themselves do they find in your product, in your brand, or in your narrative? And with the invention and adoption of this thing right here, the smartphone, 
it has become majorly important because it is something we deal with every day. So if you take a look at this and you see, you know, what do you see in these brands' touch points? When you, when you look at Google down here, it's, it's begging you, what can I do for you, master? You put in whatever you want, you know, it doesn't matter how absurd. Oh, I want to see, you know, a young girl in the Philippines playing with puppies. You know, I want to buy, you know, 18th century, you know, hand-painted pots, whatever. It'll take you there. It'll give you whatever your thing that you're looking for. YouTube, same thing. When you go to YouTube, it's instant. It's right in the name. You upload it, we play it, and then you search the internet for it. This is true with most of our social media, with Facebook, everything. It is all about what of ourselves we see in it. And this is one of the things that has affected the value of music, is that music is still very narcissistic, uh, we like to sing about ourselves, which is a good thing. If you're going to sing someone's truth, it's not about doing what your fans want. It's about going in and uh, really looking inward and digging for what is in you. And I'll, I'll talk about something here in a second, but I want you to see this. So this is Martin Lindstrom, and these are the books. Uh, the two that I was lucky enough to get was Brand Sense and Biology. Um, in, uh, like I say, 2014. And it was a profound experience. Uh, once I had this information, then I could clearly see, oh, okay, I get it. So these over here on, which side? That side over there uh, are his 10 branding pillars, is what he calls them. When I talk to artists, like I've said before, I will call them emotional conduits. These are the things that human beings need to really build a strong bond and connection. This is true in relationships as well. Um, you know, uh, a lot of... What you would say is like, you know, I'm not like a, I'm getting flustered because this t touches on the red pill thing, male and female relationships or whatever. And the power dynamic uh, have everything to do with this because we as people are competing for attention on social media with every mega brand in the planet. And what an alpha is considered is someone who, who is of high social value and they kind of intuitively know these and have these in their dating process. You take your girl out for food and, you know, there's evangelism and sense of belonging and hanging out with friends and all these things play out in that realm, too. But we're sticking with music. So um, if any of you are interested and I highly recommend that you do this, a um, couple of the things that I want to mention before I jump off this page is why you need to do this homework for yourself. And I've said this in another uh, earlier version, um, was the Tony Hawk um, analogy, and I'll hit that again. But also, this is about rewiring your neurological um, connections. It's like a, growing a, a bonsai tree. Am I saying that right? Is a bonsai tree? I think so. It's been a minute since I watched the original Karate Kid. I might have to throw that in. But anyhow, you, you want to form it toward a light. And this is why. Because when you fill your mind with all of the things that you need to know, branding, publicity, songwriting, uh, music composition, music theory, um, marketing, all these different emotional intelligence, leadership, project management, your ideas at the moment 
of incubation, the moment they're of inception, they are perfectly formed for the marketplace. You don't have to go back and re-scheme them. They just manifest ready. They're good to go. So that's the, the main reason. The other reason is, and I'm not a big advocate of, you know, speaking and just giving things away because when you give them away, they're valueless to people. The easiest way to guarantee that someone is not going to do something is to let them, you know, if you loan out a book, no one's going to read it. You're not, you know, plus you're probably not getting it back. Um, but they're definitely, a lot of times, don't read it. Girls a little different with their romance novels. They'll read it. But, like, for guys and, like, a, you know, uh, improve yourself book, at least in my experience, that's what I found. So, anyhow... So Tony Hawk, if you live next door to Tony Hawk for 10 years and every day you're talking to him about every micro movement he's doing and, and what the, you know, what do you got to do to pull off a 720? At the end of the 10 years, you ain't dropping in on a skateboard and doing a 720 five foot out. It's not happening. You got to pay for it in flesh. And it's why. You have to earn it. You got to go out and interact. So I'm all about advocating. And one of the other people affiliated with that, before we start going into the branding points, that is a master. And I highly recommend to anyone out there who is looking to better understand brand and marketing, but in a way that is true to an artist check out the Bones Brigade documentary um, and check out Rodney Mullins' TED Talks. Uh, Rodney is one of the Bones Brigade. He's kind of the, he's a free, what back in the day he was called a freestyle skater, which was like little flippity tricks on flat ground. And then later on, he um, rebooted his career by becoming a street skater. And doing incredible maneuvers. But he basically invented the a large portion of the physical language that are the tricks that serve the, as the foundation for modern day street, street skating. As well as vert, you know. And him and Tony would go back and forth with innovations all the time and inspire each other. Um, but Rodney has a very specific way of communicating. And he is the perfect example of of how to do it with sort of class and respect. Although I won't get into the world industry's years. Uh, there's things there that I don't necessarily agree with him on, but who am I to judge? Anyhow, let's get on with it. So pillar number one, a clear vision with weddings a clear vision is the union of two people before all. That's the easiest way to say it without getting into religion and what I believe or what anyone else has believed. Um, and I'm not, I'm just not going to discuss it. I do believe in a God. I had a near-death experience. I seen the light. Uh, but beyond that, I'm going to keep it that simple. Um, so, yeah, clear vision and, ah, Ren's clear vision, sick boy. ICP's clear vision is the dark carnival. Um, as you should see up at the top there, it's a dark carnival. So, we're just going to keep, and we're going to breathe through these. As I hit on different things, I may stop and talk, but we'll keep it going. So, let me pull myself out of here real quick. Stories. So story number one is the wedding itself. It's the celebration and the ritual, all the pomp and circumstance surrounding the wedding. And then there's another story that happens during the wedding, which is the best man's speech. Uh, there's usually a couple of juicy tidbits in there about who the best man was. Uh, I think sometimes the bridesmaid. Uh, I think she does one. That had, I, I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to skip over it because I forgot what, what they're actually called. Uh, 
So, and then every other experience that every wedding guest has had with the bride or the groom or the family. Those are stories that bond us to them. So, in Ren's case, okay, take another pill, boy. It's about the battle within. And within his lyrics, there is a storyline that goes back and forth. And at different points, you get to see different aspects of who he is and how he's coping within the battle and little elaborations about his struggle and suffering throughout. And then also Violet's Tale. I included that because that's another element, although his perfection in branding was really with high Ren. Although he's very, I think he has a complete brand, especially after checking out his website. And there's a clip in there from uh, coming up on that. But I, I want this about high Ren because that's the perfect example of how to do it in a song, which a lot of artists don't nail. And then ICP, um, their stories were the six Jokers cards. Um, and I do want to share some insight on that. So, for example, uh, the guy you know, over there uh, with the black and gold. So that's the Ringmaster album. So I do know that. I watched the interview from uh, and Violent J was talking about him. So... The way the Joker, or at least that Joker worked, is the story to him was that if you were to die today and you went to a place, into a realm, where you had to face off with this dude in a battle for your life, but the, the trick to it was that for every sin that you committed, for every bad deed, gave him a pound of existence. And then for every good deed, you took away a pound of existence. So if you died right now, would you get your ass handed to you? Or would you be able to crush this dude? You know, who are you? Where, where's your karma at, basically? So, and each clown had their own sort of storyline and whatnot. As well as I know, like, from the Beverly Kills days, the, the one song... Uh, that will always stick out to me, uh, putting Dylan's sideburns in the locker. <clears throat> Shout out Juggalos. Uh, so anyhow, uh, yeah, in Beverly Kills, they're basically hunting down the cast of Beverly Hills 90210 uh, and doing wicked acts, you know, to kill them. Just stuff that, you know, ICP, for, for Renegades, I know you're all about, you know, peace and, and love and, and acceptance a lot. A lot of people. ICP is inner city kids that were into big time wrestling and, and kind of horror core. And they, they're just having fun. They don't really take it that serious. Um, and they have a ball with their show. They're amazing performers. Um, but it's not. They're actually pretty moral people. Uh and speaking of which, I don't know if this will ever reach Violent J or Shaggy Too Dope, but the buildup of this, I watched your guys, one of your appearances on the Tom Segura show. And I know the gathering can get pretty edgy from what I hear. I haven't been to a gathering yet. Um, although I do believe you guys had the first gathering of the Juggalos in Toledo. At the convention center, Toledo, Ohio. If I'm not mistaken, that's that was my hometown originally. But on that Tom Segura, man, oh, there were a couple of moments where I was like, hey, hey, I'm not trying to see all this. What the heck? And Shaggy actually was turning and like gagging. That's exactly what I was I would do. And also they bring up, I'm not gonna say his name, another wicked dirty nasty performer who shaggy said should be in hell yeah i was at the show in i want to say it was 87 or 88 maybe 89 that he did in toledo ohio at a place called uh god what the, 
the can the uh, kids town. And yeah, that was like going to see Jeffrey Dahmer perform a murder. We did not know what we were getting into. I was emotionally scarred afterwards. People were trying to kill him. That was not cool. We were not cool with that show. And I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to give him any clout. He's dead, gone, and I, we'll leave it at that. But applauds for you guys and your reaction. They were very moral people. Insane clown posse. And good. St- I mean, you listen to like Violent J talk about the things that he's able to help people do. Like Flint. Let me just give this shout out. When Flint had their water crisis, what did ICP do? They shipped them a semi truck full of Fago. Dude, I mean it. That was awesome in the most ICP way. All right, so sense of belonging. Um, one of the and and one of these thing, uh, one of the things I want to add about these branding pillars is that. A single thing can be many things. So you have the bride side and the groom side. That's a sense of belonging, but it's also a a ritual. It's also juxtaposition and enemies, as this will come up again later. So then we've got the personal invitation that it's one of the, and this is also a multifaceted thing. This is about. You know, grandeur, evangelism, uh, it's a ritual, it's sensory appeal. There's often logos or like leaves that show up on them. So one thing can be many. So with Ren, his sense of belonging, I thought there was something under there is in the high in the high rend video in the song um there are a lot of elements that are inclusionary so you have the hospital gown all right that's something that we can all relate to also again multi sensory appeal um there is the ending monologue where he reminds us that we are all human beings and then there's the the use of the vintage style house lamps in the video which is a sense very familiar sense to a lot of people who have grandparents or grew up uh in certain and some people might even have that those lamps uh for themselves and then there's the comment section for the youtube community and this was one of the huge key factors in Ren blowing up the way he did is not only could everyone go on there and comment, but the YouTube reaction community absolutely fell in love with Ren and did everything they could. And they're the ones who really did help that him go to number one in the UK. With ICP, it was them. I think their fans named it. Uh, named themselves the Juggalos and was a very huge um, smart move including like one of the things that ICP did that was so cool and I remember thinking about this Um, they had us up there I was working with a rap artist and they had us at one of their Hollow Wicked events uh, at the Majestic in Detroit in like the 90s Um, but I remember thinking to myself, I wonder how many people are going to like copy this act and what they're going to think about it. And then it was a few years later, I heard ICP started signing the groups that were like juggalos that started their own thing, which it's also a brilliant kind of uh, Grateful Dead move. You know, Grateful Dead would have been kind of like that. Um, at least they worth their music, letting everyone copy it and trade it. And there was a whole underground thing. So, but the nature and narrative in much of their material. Um, So I remember listening to, I don't know if it was Ringmaster or Beverly Kills. And this is a question I would love to ask them guys. I think they grew up or came up around Ferndale. Because one of the, I think one of the interviews they talked about is how they built their wrestling ring. And they went to this railroad yard where these railroad ties were, were. And I lived for a short time in Ferndale between Nine Mile and Eight Mile. 
on a street called Hazelhurst. And when we'd go out, um, you know, late nights wandering around, there was a train yard right near that had all these big railroad ties and stuff like that. And a couple of the kids in the neighborhood that I rode bikes with, there was a school that we used to jump off uh, like a little dirt hill. But they were always like, eh, we're going to this party, the ICP. And, and plus it was spray painted everywhere. That comes up in a minute. All right, so let's keep it on to the thing. So, but I was curious. I am curious. If I ever talk to you guys, I will ask you, like, Ferndale? Because in one of their lyrics, they're talking about Fago and going to the store or something. And there was this little quickie mark down at the end of the street, kind of, and walking in there. I remember listening to this was after I moved from Detroit back to Toledo, and they're talking. And they're describing this environment. And it, it was like walking into that Quickie Mart store all over. I remember when I walked into it, it was like this little Chaldean market on the, on the corner. And it was like a dead end kind of street. And as soon as you walk in, it was cases of Fago. And when I heard them talking about it, I just could not help but think like, I wonder if they went to that market. <laughs> but anyhow... Uh, so spraying a fago, that's one of the things they do in their show. They also mention drinking it. And then, you know, the juggalos wearing makeup. That's another sense of belonging. But one thing that's clear when you listen to, especially early ICP, they were describing the life of inner city kids. You know, this is what white kids in the inner city go through. And it wasn't just white. It was, uh, my hood was mixed, so... But it was very much, you could, it's like you could smell it. They painted such a, well, you know, like Ren. They're master storytellers. They take you into the, uh, into the environment. Oh. So, evangelism. This is a really important step. So this is one of the newspaper clippings. What do you do when you're getting married? You take out an ad in the paper. You're, what, you're, what you're doing is you're showing people that this is a special ta-da moment. Ta-da! Look, we did something special. This isn't the ordinary. This isn't work a day. This is your perception of what we're about to do is up here. So that's how evangelism affects us. So move on. Oh, Ren, again, his evangelism was the YouTube reactors, which I got this little honeycomb clip. I did watch this once, but man, it's way too much to watch at one time. Um, but really, what Renegade doesn't talk about Ren every chance they get to squeeze them in. It, it's undeniable, man. Once you get down past more than like 10 of his songs, if you go that far down the rabbit hole, then you're de really hooked because you find out this dude does almost everything and he does it well. ICP evangelism. So one of the things, and this, we'll talk about this concept up here, Monday Morning Buzz in a second. So, like I say, early days in Detroit, one of the things that I could not escape is, and if they lived in near Ferndale, then I definitely understand. But it seemed like everywhere I went, when I pulled up, went down the street, coming out of the alley or in some vacant building, was ICP. And I think this was even during their, because I had lived up there in, I want to say, 91, 92-ish and I think they were already formed, but I think it was their, I've heard Inner City Posse, but they had like a wrestling thing going or something like that. I don't know. But ICP was everywhere. And then especially when I was going up years later, like 93, 94, 95, I'd still be going up. And you just see ICP spray painted on every vacant building, which leads me to this building personal relationships with uh, small record store owners. Now, I don't know how many times they did this. But in my case, in my story, it played a key role. And this is where a lot of people, uh, a lot of groups, I don't know, aside from using the traditional industry marketing aspects, um, this is one of the things that I found special about ICP 
and this is one of the more common areas that is absent in other other acts is their evangelism so in my case there was a record store owner Rodney and we were doing some production with him but he was in, had this little record store more of a hip hop record store next to our kind of local venue in Toledo it was called Frankie's shout out Frankie's um but anyhow I'm in there one day and I'm looking through all these tapes and Rodney is off talking to someone else. And I see ICP. And I stop for a second and I look at, I, you know, and I interrupt this guy. I'm like, hey, Rodney, ICP, aren't they like a street gang from Detroit? All right, let me, let me switch out here. Let me switch out. So here's Rodney's reaction. He's talking to another customer. And Rodney didn't, I knew him for probably close to a year before this, and I'd never seen him get really excited. So he stops, and he's like, oh my God, E, that's your shit. Let me tell you about this. And he comes over, and he's like, man, I went up to the one stop, and I met these dudes, and uh, dude was talking to me about his group, and they invited me up, like, come on up this weekend, man. We'll cook out, we'll hang out, you know? So... We went up there, man. Dude answered the door. He had this blue bandana, man. He was all like loked out and stuff, man. But we went up there. And I don't remember if they drank or smoked or what they did. But they hung out and they left an impression. It sounded like they kind of also told Rodney, hey, this is kind of who our audience is. Inner city dudes who are kind of like white trash. And, you know, because at the time that was very much me. And what happened after Rodney, like, dude, this is your stuff. I'm telling you, I ended up leaving the store with Ringmaster and Beverly Kills. And then what happened within that week, I showed it to all my friends, the kids in my hood. And then guess who went out and got all the ICP stuff and kept getting it over at Har? All the kids in my neighborhood. They immediately got, you know, a ton of fans just off that one interaction. And that's why the mono stereo, that's a music one-stop distributor. And so I don't know if they remember that, but uh, that was my introduction. And that level of enthusiasm, let me switch back. That level of enthusiasm is Monday morning buzz. And you get that when you give your audience goosebumps, when you break bread, when you do things above and beyond to form a relationship with people. Then you get Monday morning buzz, and it's essential. There's other elements to it, but we'll get back to it. Keep this moving along. I got class tomorrow. Grandeur. So this is about laying it on the pomp and circumstance. And, you know, it, it's not necessarily about what expense it's just about doing things that let people know this is something special. I'm going to take a swig. Sorry about that, but it's hot in here. I live down in Florida now. Also grandeur. We're staying with the wedding theme. More grandeur, you know. Wren. There's another element of grandeur. Big, bold. The moment Ren stands up is also another act of grandeur in the video High Ren. And then there's the narrative of the heavenly forces battle, you know, between good and evil. That's the ultimate, you know, forces in the universe. And by having those parts, it adds gravitant to what he's doing. Also, some of the videos where he has really these grand views of the vista and the big, sprawling, uh, cinematic uh, performances. And I think, I'm, I could be mistaken, because I didn't think about this until just now, but does he use the impact font just on his live videos? And then on his... Um, Lyric videos, he'll go ahead and be more playful and, and change up the fonts. I can't remember for sure. 
Um, so ICP, ah, let me do this. So you guys can't see it. This is the, the one on the, with the red kind of pinkish hue. You can barely see two figures kind of walking in some kind of exaggerated form. Now let me say this. I, I got to do another ICP story. So Rodney later on got ICP booked down in Toledo with Coolio and Outcast. And they used my dat deck at that show, by the way. Well, I showed up at the show and Rodney was like, hey, do you got a dat deck at your studio? Because uh, all the bands have their music on dats and no one's got one. I'm like, yes, I do. Let me run and get it for you. But one of the things that I seen that was amazing, and I will give it to those guys all days long as far as performers go. And I don't know if they still do it, but if they do, ICP, if you guys still do that, or if you don't do it, if I was your manager, I'd be like, yo, man, you guys should be doing this because this is one of the sweetest things i ever seen. So... This is at the beginning of one of their early shows, and they had this whole wicked circus hip hop beat, you know, the do 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 do. And I think they had some 808s in there, and it made it, you know, wicked. But they both came out on either side of the stage, and they did this synchronized wicked clown walk, all oh, and came out. And one of the craziest things that I seen at that show, so I was up probably like first row off the floor kind of bad the backstage because I had my equipment down there and I kind of had to walk out but I wanted to come around and see the front of the stage so I walked up and as they're going on and with that audience at the time it was mostly you know gangbangers were in front of the stage and then all these white kids in clown makeup who were kind of skinny and not big start pushing their way to the front of the stage and fist fights are breaking out. I'm tripping. I'm like, oh, we're about to get shut down. But I remember there's, and I'll never forget him. He was like a smaller version of Shaggy 2 Dope. Skinny dude, and he had some clown makeup on. And this brother busted him right in the face. And I was close enough to hear. And the dude grabs the brother by the neck and he's like look you can fucking kill me but this is our group we let you guys have the front of the stage for your group but this is our group and you're gonna have to kill me to get me out of here because we're showing up for our boys and i seen these two brothers who were much bigger than him kind of look at each other with this look of like all right dude you know and they let them, they took over the front of that stage for the entire time ICP, and they killed it. Their performance, their energy, I just got it right at that time. And I knew, I was like, man, these guys, they they got their stuff together. So uh, other aspects, that's when I really started to see them. But you'd go to a record store, and they'd have ICP Ringmaster posters or something. They always had some elements of grandeur and evangelism everywhere and the grandeur is what sets that like i say you're training your audience in perception um and unlike on the right that's another uh image digital artwork of their six jokers car cards definitely grandeur again it sets the stage for what you're getting into now this one the marquee i included this one not because this is something unique to icp i just happened to see this and i'm like oh what this is this is important for emerging bands and when you're setting the perception when you play venues that don't have a marquee the venue isn't training the audience that it's anything special it's a, this is just another bar there's no reason to give a crap about anyone playing here. And this is an element that is missing from 90% of the venues in the U.S., at least the small mom and pop venues. So, and then 
I don't know if this is the semi that they sent up to Flint with the Fago. I didn't know they had their own semi. Probably for the Juggalo and the wrestling and stuff like that. But this is evangelism and grandeur again. All right. Mystique. The wedding veil is an element of mystique. The giving of gifts is an element of mystique. What did we get? Um, excuse me. I gotta take another swig. It's hot down here in Florida. Now, this isn't necessarily a common uh, wedding practice, but well, getting photographs are, but this particular one speaks levels with mystique. Um, and this would also be grandeur if you got this in a film. It's almost heavenly. It's otherworldly. As is this floating veil shot, you know. With Ren, uh, the strange nature in the beginning of the video along with the character wearing the pig's mask. And there's elements of mystique. Not to mention, you got that cool little uh, lens flare that looks like an upside down, or it looks like a star, you know? That in itself is like a little micro flash of like, ooh, what is this? Grandeur. Mystique. You know? Although I'm sure that was completely unplanned. Also with the flickering of the lights when the dark ran is talking. That's an element of mystique. And then his webpage. This is something I didn't know, but if you go to his webpage and you, sh you search it now, your cursor is a little flashlight. It's a little round flashlight on the wall and you shine it on the different things and that's also an element of belonging. But it's also an element of mystique. Ooh, it's dark. You're, you're, you're searching. I thought that was a really cool touch. And then he's also got some of his symbols there. The pig mask and the bird, the wings. You know. ICP. Their mystique. Their eyes are glowing green, now their eyes are glowing red, and then it's the house of horrors, and there's this element in, I think that was Malenko, the clown. Did I get that right, Juggalos? Malenko? I think that's Malenko. Um, now, those albums I haven't listened to, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just haven't got, like, hip-hop is not my thing. It just isn't. I admire great acts and great performances, but I promise at some point in my life I will do a thorough ICP catalog search. Um, but then there's also this image here with their red eyes and stuff, another cool aspect of Masik, as well as them wearing the makeup in the first place and hiding their, their identities. Another major, major aspect of Mystique. Now, you don't have to do that as an artist, you know. One of the things that I seen as I was doing my YouTube research and just wanted to get out there and see some of these other branding videos and what people were saying. Because what I want to include in my videos are not what everyone else is saying. I want to give people the things they're not getting from anywhere else that I know are 100% accurate. But one of the things that everybody is sort of hitting on is they keep saying this I understand why so many artists are so sensitive to formula because it's ridiculous the way everybody else treats it when they're out there oh co learn this song cop break down this artist's song and break down their brand and and extract what you can do from their brand and even though this is kind of along the lines of that what i'm telling you is no 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 this stuff is the structure in which your brand needs to adhere to but your brand and your true storyline is deep in here. It's in here. It's in your life experiences. And you got to go deep within to find out who you are. But much like Ren, this is one of the other avenues 
that Ren has shined a light, and even ICP has shined a light in how to sustain yourself in a career. Everyone would advise against them doing pretty much everything they do. Oh, a nine minute video, this song, Hi Ren, you know, to just listen. If you just listen to that, it doesn't translate. It just doesn't translate. If you watch the performance, now it gets it. But Ren doesn't repeat. He doesn't have a genre. He jumps around and he does whatever he wants. That the industry advise against. And this is something that all these branders do. They, they would be advising you to adhere to formula. And I'm saying, no, you don't have to do any of that. You just have to understand what the structure is so that when you build your building, it stays up. You know, you have an escalator or an elevator, you have stairways, and it adheres to code. But within those parameters, you have complete creative control. And that's what I'm trying to share. So, rituals, the ring, that's also a symbol. It's also sensory appeal. It's also evangelism. You're telling other people, this one's spoken for, you know. Um, But rituals are an important part of the process. The cutting of the cake, the reception, the band or the DJ. Also all rituals. The wearing of white, ritual. The tux, ritual. The bride and groom on top of the cake, ritual. The march, which is also sensory appeal. Um, also a ritual, but the presenting of the bride with the bride's uh, march and the, here comes the bride song. Multi-sensory aspects of ritual. With Ren, he's got one, the impact font in some of his videos that starts out, he, he announces it with some sort of, you know, uh, video title and then the use of the pig's mask is also another ritual of Ren's now and the using of the impact font and I think like I've said before that's a, just the uh, on his live videos but I'm not 100% on that so anyhow ICP rituals one of the things that they do that is really smart on their behalf is the gathering of the juggalos. Also, I've heard from from many people who've gone or hip hop artists who uh, mentioned it in um, their interviews. It is a magical time where your eyes will be open to the other elements of the world. Now, juggalos are mostly good people. They are. But well, that's kind of like and the, the party of parties. So you're probably going to see things. Not well. I'll I'll leave that to the juggle on. I'm not going to comment on that. I I'd be at home because I come from the jackass era of punk rock and you know BMX and doing crazy stuff like that. So, but so this one holiday themed events. Oh, did I spell holiday wrong? I should have used spell checker. I think I did. Isn't that one L? Dang. That's that inner city education there. Coming back to bite me in the butt. Mm, so, man. so anyhow, yeah, this was a flyer that uh, I actually happened to find of the artist, uh, the Hollow Wicked uh, event that they had. I think they would do this every year back then. They still Do they still do this? But the artist that I uh, worked with was JP the Unknown, and he he tried, but there there were a couple of uh, speed wobbles at that show. I don't know if any juggalos remember that, but uh, yeah. And I actually ended up Alex Abyss got me to announce for the show. Um, that was kind of cool. They like I say, man, ICP was always cool cool to us. So I got nothing but love for the juggalos. Um, but yeah, so they did Hollow Wicked and they would release Christmas albums and all these different, I, I don't know if they did Easter or what all, 
uh, types of albums. I think they did some Valentine stuff, probably. But those boys will not pass up a good holiday to do a song about. It's always the Wicked version, but they do their thing. What am I doing here? Oh, Rituals. Okay, yeah. The Spraying of Fago, which is also, like we said, sensory appeal and a sense of belonging. Kind of like Guar getting squirted with blood if you went to the Guar show and you're all covered in blood. Or you went to the ICP show and you're covered in Fago. It's kind of uh, an important aspect of the ritual nature of it. And there's other things that they do. Um, I would... That's where I'm advocating for the Wicked Clown Walks. I hope that they do that little thing at their shows because... Man, that was so impressive. They, that was the, if I sound like I'm gushing on ICP a little bit at times, that was their, um, you had me at hello moment, you know, from the Jerry Maguire movie. You had me at hello. When I seen the, the, the Wicked Clown Walk, I was like, man, that's sweet. I wish I thought of that. But anyhow. Face painting, sensory appeal, symbols, mystique, evangelism, and a ritual. And this is an important, very important thing. If you look at a lot of the bigger events, like zombie crawls, how many zombie crawls are there anymore? Well, you get an audience evangelist, you know, publicity out of it. Because anyone who takes the time to do the makeup, what do they do? They grab their phone. I'm going to zombie crawl tonight. And they're advertising everyone else. Look, this is what we're doing, you know. So, and that's part of the reason those events get so big. They get all that additional publicity. Ah. Symbols. Symbology. So, you often see the doves, the hearts, the rings. And in this, there, there is an action symbol. Removing the garter belt is a way of saying, hey, this is closed for business, boys. This is the last thing that you're ever going, this is the closest you're ever supposed to get. Psh, here, now you're next. Also a tradition and a ritual, sensory appeal, but it's a symbol as well. Wren symbols. The pig face and the wings. I think those are wings. Yeah, those got to be wings. Those are wings, right, Ren? Or renegades? Anyone who knows for sure. But these are important aspects. ICP. The face themselves. The mask. You know, Violent J and Shaggy 2 Dope. And they've changed colors, and I think they changed designs a couple times over the years. But then they got their logo, the Hatchet Man, which is Psychopathic Records logo, which is their record company. And then you have all the, you know, clown faces for each of their album, which became symbols for their band as well. One of the great things is the second you look at anything ICP, whether it's a song or T-shirt, any piece of merch, you know what you're looking at. Oh, that's ICP. Very obvious branding. Very smart. Very brilliant. It's awesome. A lot of people wish they could brand that good. Wait, was there something else? Nope. That's that. Sensory appeal. So, you go to a wedding, you, what do you got? You got the clinging of glasses. Get, let's get them to kiss. Cling, 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 cling. You got the cake. You got the food. You got the DJ. You got the flowers. You get the wedding attire. These are all aspects of sensory appeal. The wedding DJ, the decor, the aesthetic. You kind of know what you're going to be getting to an extent. There's a lot of individual expression that you can get depending on the wedding you're going to, but these are important ah, these are important elements that set the importance of the experience. 
Ren, it's the single shot, man. It covers it all. His sensory appeal, you got the pig mask. We have a relationship with the pig, both in food and then as well as the animal. And then you have his um, hospital gown. You have the apron of the pig that's covered in blood and he's wearing these rubber gloves. You have the wheelchair and then the dingy condition of the room. All these are multi sense You can almost feel and smell the mold that's in that room, which I think I mentioned in another video. That room looks moldy as crap, man. Ren, if you were in that room, especially a lot, and it looks like uh, you guys shot Sick Boy in that room or another part of that building. Man, that mold on top of your... Uh, you know, Lyme disease, I'm sure that's not helping. But ICP, again, Fago and the makeup are both sensory appeal, you know, and then every piece of merch is sensory appeal. But this is just looking in. Also, I know in the narrative of what they talked about back in a lot of their songs mentioned Fago, but they're like Ren, very descriptive, at least in your early years. And I'm digging up on my memory but i did listen to ringmaster and beverly kills quite a bit i was just thoroughly entertained when i when i got those records cuz it was so outrageous and it was so fun and it, it was so my neighborhood I'm like okay yeah i kn i know all these people i i'm kind of one of them i got different tastes in music but they would just describe in brilliant wording and and not to accuse ICP of being brilliant in the sense that they're going to use, you know, proper English, you know. They're using their native vernacular, but they don't forget the details. You they do take you into that world. And that that in and of itself is brilliant. And I'm not saying ICP are dumb. Not at all. They're just, they are, they are who they are. And they're hustlers. They do it. You know, that's the biggest thing. Is they get out and they do it. They've always made their career happen. And like also Ren. Same to, you know, Ren. They just get about their business. Uh, but yeah, sensory appeal. Huge. So... Enemies and juxtaposition or juxtaposition. Now, I will make this distinguish. Uh, is it distinguishment? So the juxtaposition is not in Martin Lindstrom's books. That is something that I added when I started looking at the rituals and things that are found in religious ceremonies. A lot of times, like a wedding, it's not about an enemy. Or at least not at the beginning. I mean, give them in, in America in these days and times. Just give them about five or ten years. They're gonna end up in front of a courtroom somewhere, and uh, probably gonna be enemies. Which is a sh it's a shame that we're at that point. I won't get into all that, but so the brides, the grooms, you have this distinguishment. There's the bride side. There's the groom side. There's a juxtaposition of you know the whole arrangement of the event with Ren it was good Ren and bad Ren the two sides of the coin you know and with ICP first off just by having two clowns them being two of them with two different makeup styles, there's that juxtaposition. But also, and I'll come back to this, first, when ICP was first coming out, one of the things that, I don't know, it, it just seemed like everyone who wasn't a juggalo hated ICP. Absolutely hated on them with a passion could not stand ICP, would dog them at every chance, even even to this day, every once in a while. And it, this just happened at school 
with a younger student, and I mentioned ICP, and he called them the cockroaches of hip hop. And I immediately responded and was like, well, if you mean that they're still going to be here after a nuclear holocaust, yeah, in that way, they're like cockroaches. That's how solid their brand is. That's how solid and about it they are about what they do. Um, but I, I just, I never got it. And I think it's just a phobia. A lot of, you know, like one of the rappers I worked with back in the day hated them just because of the clown makeup. I hate clowns, you know. It was silly. But anyhow, so then, as some people in hip-hop, the world of hip-hop might know, Eminem came after him because he was a Detroit rapper and, you know, he had never met them. He just lived under their lore and he wanted to shred any, any, and I, I'm taking liberties here and I'm not trying to get on M's bad side uh, at all. But I think it was just, you know, living under someone's shadow and getting dogged by your city. I understand where that hate and anguish for others can can build up and manifest. They've sent squash at beef, which is good because it was getting out of control. They were they were getting really bad. Uh, the D12 guys and the ICP posse's and stuff. I only heard stories, but man, it's the last thing that you know inner city needs more of is beef and violence. Enough of that naturally. But this other one I want to talk about. ICP and FBI for for renegades or anyone else in the music business that doesn't know this, um, this is something that when I learned about it, I just man, I felt for juggalos. I really, really felt for juggalos. So the FBI, well, what was it, two thousand fourteen or something like that. Maybe it was a little bit earlier, 2010, somewhere around there. The FBI came out with a gang list of the most dangerous gangs. And along with the Crips and the Bloods and the white supremacists and biker gangs, they had, I think, ICP Juggalos were number seven. And the fallout from that, you know, at first, I think when I heard about it, I thought, like, Everyone in music kind of thinks like, oh, this is great publicity, you know, having the feds against you. But what it translated into, and this one really stunk for them, is that any kid anywhere in the country that had an ICP shirt or a tattoo of the hatchet man or was wearing a hatchet man, you know, necklace or anything would then get put on the gang's task force. One, it got all ICP's merch pulled out of Hot Topic and everywhere. Their records got dropped from all kinds of places. They, it was way harder for them to get insurance to, you know, for any of their concerts and stuff. There were a ton of logistics. But when it came to their fans, it came to, like, people losing custody of their kids because they could say they were in a gang. And... Uh, yeah, there was just a lot of heat that came down on the heads of a lot of innocent people who were nothing but fans of a music group. And it was completely irresponsible, the FBI. Of course, no apology ever, no redaction ever, no correction, you know, nothing out there to ever set the record straight. If you look at any music group and... Or, or any music genre or fans of any music, you're going to have a certain percentage of, you know, felons and violent offenders and thieves and you name it. It doesn't matter what category. They're there. It's It matches the world population. But the, I think the reason I heard Violent J say this, and this makes sense to a, uh, a degree, is that, you know, what it did is... This made it, you know, like if you're out in Iowa or South Dakota and there's a trailer park and there's five kids that are wearing ICP stuff 
and you can say you got a street gang, now that sheriff's office gets additional funding so they can go buy a land tank, you know, and justify having this big thing to bold over, bulldoze over someone's trailer or something. They get all this additional funding. So that makes sense, you know. And I'm sure, you know, everyone's fans, you know, especially anything urban, you're going to have certain... And, and that's not true. Let me, let me make a correction. Because I've seen the insurance statistics, and that's where you see the truth. What is the most violent and crime-ridden genre of music? You can put this in the comments. Take your guess. You know, you want to know what it is? Country. Because what's the problem demographic? Male and alcohol. That is the problem demographic. Male between the ages of 15 and I think it's 25 or 30. They just have issues with testosterone. They got to do what they got to do. They're going to be crazy. And anyone who's got trauma or issues with their upbringing is going to act a fool. And they're going to be, you know, sadistic and do other things. Now, I'm not saying every man is sadistic or every young boy is sadistic and violent. But the ones who are, when they go out and they drink and they're in a public space, they're going to act a fool. You know, it's always going to be that one. But the reason we don't hear about the country music issues is because it's rural and it's in one small little town and it happens one night. And you don't hear it on the nightly news every time there's a show, you know, and it's a lot quieter. But the insurance companies know what they got to do when they have security and ambulances at an event and stuff and how many sexual assaults and everything else goes on. And they have the real statistics on it. And when I saw that list and I've been trying to find it and I haven't been able to find it since I saw it once and I did see it on the Internet, so... I got to credit, you know, give that stipulation. I saw it on the internet, so it's got to be true, right? But no, it was like a very official, like, insurance thing. And it wasn't like, oh, I'm looking for the most crime. I was looking up insurance for events, and it had, like, statistics in this report or something. And I didn't save it at the time. But, yeah, country music. So it's just men are going to be foolish. But, yeah, that's the enemies of ICP and the juxtaposition and that is our presentation. So what I want you guys to do with this is to see these relationships, to understand them, and see that this isn't theoretical stuff. This isn't some new, new aged approach. And it's definitely not about formula. This is about structure. This is about how human beings connect. If you remove the mythology to it and then you start empowering yourself with the knowledge that you need to form proper ideas, you can then be creative to it and do amazingly cool things that will give, that will justify a value in your music. Because, like with Ren, when I seen Ren, hi Ren, and after I got like 10, what was it, 10, 10, songs into it i don't even know i don't I remember what point but i ended up buying two of his discs i'd love to get like there's that little high ren uh printing i got it in the other i'm getting, not getting it right now but it's like the uh graphical version of his waveform and he's got the outfit inside the waveform or something a shirt like that ren man come on dog i be on that get my high ren on wear this to school take it out on my bike um and then icp merch man they're always lit i have to get some icp merch at some point here in the future put that on i just don't want to go down to the fbi <laughs> but that's not why i'm doing it but i just thought of it as i had that thought but I think that whole thing is fixed. But, man, that would kill kill aspects of my career. But, yeah, so there it is. Take this. Go empower yourself. I hope you have a better understanding. 
I'm going to do another one of these, but it's not going to be about branding. It's going to be other elements of artist development. Um, I'm going to cover a lot of different things because in the rabbit hole that I've been down, man, I've uncovered so much. There's so many cause causational links between the value that people have for music and just artists areas of artist knowledge that I know are black holes things that I could never find in print when I was doing my homework or even find a YouTuber talking about or anything because let's face it even though I'm on YouTube a lot of YouTubers and I'm kind of one of them but not really I'm going to school I'm doing my homework and I'm doing this I'm doing this for myself it's just going slow right now because I'm in school I got shit to do but I'm practicing what I preach and I know that I can't tell anyone to do anything so I'm not telling you guys to do anything this is what I've learned if it has value to you I hope that you're able to uh, go on I'd love to hear some of your guys music or, or different things that you do especially if it pertains to any of this but I'm going to do a uh, some more of these and try and give back, uh, especially the things that have to do with the devaluation of music. We don't have to be broke, you know, but don't go out and copy, you know, Ren or ICP. Although if you do copy ICP and you're any good, they might sign you. Um, but I don't think that anyone can ever, I'm not sure if another juggalo can come out as a juggalo and outshine ICP and what they've done because of, of what's involved in the power, you know, their brand. Their brand is complete. It's all these things that story, the lore. So, but be yourself, man. Innovate. Anyhow, peace out. Hope you guys liked it. I got homework to do. Bye.